Hey, hey, this is Teresa Matsura, and you're listening to Uncanny Japan. Have you ever wondered who protects you? What otherworldly or godly spirit follows you through life, keeps you safe, watches you while you sleep? In the West, we have patron saints, a saint that's been assigned to you because of your name. Or I just learned, if you happen to have a name or names that don't have a saint ascribed to them, it's your birthday, because every day of the year is the feast of at least one saint. Voila, your patron saint. But what about Japan? Is there a patron Buddha? About 25 years ago, I was sitting at the dinner table with my in-laws, and my mother-in-law pulled out this very complicated-looking diagram. She ran her finger down it and said, Terry, let's find out who your protecting God is. I said, sure. So today, let's find out who your protecting Buddhist deity is. We all have one, and it doesn't matter what kind of name you have at all. Would you like to explore the stranger, more obscure corners of Japanese culture? Dig a little deeper into superstitions, curious customs, and all those mysterious creatures that inhabit the land? If so, then this is the podcast for you. Uncanny Japan is where I, author Teresa Matsura, share all the fascinating tidbits I unearth while doing research for my writing. From the bizarre to the ghastly, and everything in between. I hope you enjoy the show. Hey, hey, how are you? Doing well? As well as can be expected? Yeah, me too. So today I'm going to talk about who is protecting you on the Buddhist side of things. A little about that deity's character and how to identify it. If, let's say, you come across a statue at a temple, or you want to buy a small effigy of it, or, I don't know, maybe it shows up in your dreams or something. In a good way, not a creepy way. Buddhists don't do that. The method I'm using of finding your protecting God is the one I've seen used everywhere, so I think I can safely say that it's the most common. I'm not saying there isn't another one out there. Just I didn't find it. This one kept popping up, and it's the one my mother-in-law used, so it's gotta be right. Let me start by telling you a Japanese saying. Umaretsuki hotoke-sama to goen ga musubarete mas. We are all born with a connection to the Buddha. But there isn't just one Buddha. Well, there is that one Buddha, Siddhartha Gautama, the one you're thinking about right now. But there are also quite a few different other types of Buddhas, or gods, or protecting gods. And every one of us is born and assigned to one of them, to guide us, protect us, and to help us throughout our lives. Which is very nice. And lucky for us, the deity isn't assigned by name. So instead of names, they match up with our eto, or animal zodiac. Do you remember which animal you are? That's okay if you don't. I'll run through the years before each one, just in case you forgot. Something to note is that there are different kinds of Buddhist deities and statues. In general, there's a bosatsu and a nyorai. You might know bosatsu as bodhisattva, if you're studying Buddhism. An almost enlightened being. The reason they aren't enlightened isn't because they can't, but it's because they chose to keep a single or a couple attachments so they don't go into full enlightenment yet. They can remain nearby and help as many people as possible to reach their own nirvana, which is also very nice. Kanon, or Kuanin in Chinese, is a bosatsu, bodhisattva. The second one is a nyorai, which is a being who is a version of a Buddha after attaining full enlightenment. In general, a bosatsu will be dressed more fancily, and the nyorai is usually more austere, dressed in simple robes. 
But there's also a mule. Mule aren't manifestations of the Buddha at all, but minor gods who live in heaven. You can more easily see the Hindu influence in their image. They're protectors of Buddhism, and they look fierce. They have weapons, and all over just wicked cool. But for all intents and purposes, it doesn't matter if you have a bosatsu, nyorai, or myo as your patron Buddhist saint. They all care about you, personally. So let's go through the animal zodiac one at a time, and let me introduce you to your god. Number one, the year of the rat people. Raise your hands. Were you born in the year 1948, 1960, 1972, 1984, 1996, or 2008, or 2020, actually? Well, congratulations, your guardian Buddha is Sinju Kanon Bosatsu, or the 1,000 Armed Kanon. She's the statue you see with all the arms fanning out at her sides, obviously. It's also said that she has a thousand eyes inside her hands. If you find a statue or an image of Sinju Kanon and you decide you want to count the arms, I'll save you some trouble. There are usually 42 or fewer. Two main arms, the regular ones, and then 20 little bitty arms on either side, often holding sacred objects or making mudras, hand gestures. But don't worry, that's not cheating. Actually, each arm will save the beings of 25 worlds. 25 times 40 equals 1,000. So there. Plus she's got two extra. But in earlier images of Senju Kanon, like the ones in Tosho Daiji in Nara and Fujidera in Osaka, they actually did try to get to 1,000 arms. So if you ever get a chance to see those, they're really nice. Senju Kanon is best known for removing suffering, helping recover from illness, rebirth, and just making this world a better place. She's also helpful to pray to if you have eye problems. See 1000 eyes. And it's said she's able to transform into 33 different forms in order to help the suffering. Number two, year of the ox and year of the tiger people. You guys are teamed together. Oxes are 1941, 1961, 1973, 1985, 1997, 2009, and 2021. Tigers are 1950, 1962, 1974, 1986, 1998, 2010, and 2022. Congratulations. Kokuso Bosatsu is watching over you. Kokuzo Bosatsu could literally be translated as space repository or sky repository because his wisdom is as boundless as the sky. But let's instead use the less weird name of Bodhisattva of Wisdom and Memory. This Bosatsu is special to Shingon Buddhism, an esoteric sect that I personally quite love. He can appear in different Buddha looking forms you might find him holding a wish-granting jewel or a lotus stem that has the wish-granting jewel on top. Other times, he even has a sword. Your kokuzo bolsatsu can help you improve your grades or bestow intelligence. Improves your memory, clears your head, makes for a prosperous business, and overall, just improving your skills. Kokuzo is also worshipped as the patron of craftspeople and artisans. Number three, rabbit people. I'm looking at you now. Were you born in the years 1939, 1951, 1963, 1975, 1987, 1999, or 2011? Then yay! You get to be watched over by Monju Bolsatsu. If you thought Kokuzo was smart, Monju is thought to be the smartest of all the Bosatsu and is approached when you want to gain clarity of wisdom and academic achievement, and if you want to be a good calligrapher. He was also one of the original disciples of the Buddha, and therefore can be found represented in artwork from India, Nepal, Tibet, China, and of course Japan. 
in Japan to identify an image of Monju Bosatsu, you might find him sitting on a roaring lion or a shishi, where in one hand he'll wield the Sutra of Wisdom, in the other he holds a sharp sword. He uses the sword to cut through illusion and to bring light into an unenlightened mind. And if you think he wasn't awesome enough, in Zen, it is Monju Bosatsu who is the deity of the meditation hall. And in the Tendai sect, he is the deity of the kitchen and the dining halls. There is an old saying, San nin yoreba, Monju no chie. If three people come together, the wisdom of Monju. My guess is that's a better way of saying three minds are better than one. Number four, bring me the dragon and snake people. You seem kind of related, right? Dragons and snakes. So you get to be your own reptilian group. Real quick, dragons are 1940, 1952, 1964, 1976, 1988, 2000, and 2012. Snakes are 1941, 1953, 1965, 1977, 1989, 2001, and 2013. You, my serpentine friends, are represented by Fugen Bosatsu. Fugen is the Bosatsu of universal goodness, virtue, and worthiness. He teaches that action and conduct are equally important. Fugen is also the patron of women. In Japan's Heian era, women of the court adopted a type of Buddhism that concentrated on the Lotus Sutra, because that is the sutra that cares about the salvation of women. Fugen appears in this sutra, which led naturally to him becoming a protector of women. Fugen also knows Monju. Actually, they both studied under the original Buddha. And if you ever see a picture of Buddha with two disciples on either side, one is Monju, the other is Fugen. Where Monju is all about wisdom and enlightenment, Fugen has taken up the mantle of meditation and practice. You can recognize your God because he just might be riding an elephant with his hands pressed together in prayer. That elephant might be white and it might have six tusks. Those six tusks represent overcoming your attachments to the six senses. Or sometimes he forgoes the elephant and just sits on a lotus petal. Number five, horse people, please stand up. Not that you are sitting down because horses are usually standing, right? If you were born in the years 1942, 1954, 1966, 1978, 1990, 2002, and 2014, that's you. And your protector deity is Seishi Bosatsu. Seishi, like the others, began in India, but didn't really hit it off there. In China and Japan, though, he found a home, especially with the Pure Land Buddhist. Alongside Kanon, Seishi is an attendant to the Amida Buddha and part of the Amida Triad, which sounds like an organized crime syndicate but it's not. Sadly, you don't see Seishi represented by himself very much. In Japan, at least, you'll almost always find him in the Amida Sanzon, or Amida Triad, not a gang. But when you do find him, he'll have a small water vase which symbolizes, you guessed it, wisdom. One idea as to why Seishi wasn't and isn't more popular is because our Monju, Mr. Wisdom, kind of stole the show. This bodhisattva helps to achieve clear wisdom, home security, disaster relief, and good luck. He also illuminates the world with the light of wisdom and saves people from suffering and confusion, and has tremendous power to protect the goodness in people, which I suppose we need. Number six. Next, we have Team Monkey and Sheep, another curious pairing. Monkeys, 1944, 1956, 1968, 1980, 1992, 2004, 2016. Sheep, 1943, 1955, 1967, 
1991, 2003, 2015. Monkey sheep are guarded and watched over by Dainichi Nyorai, our first Nyorai, the Great Sun or the Cosmic Buddha, and Supreme Deity of the Esoteric Sex. He is the most important Buddha in Shingon and is said to be everywhere and in everything. All the other Buddhas are just emanations of Dainichi. So he's the big kahuna. Even though earlier I said Nyorai are simply dressed, not so with Dainichi. Dainichi is gussied up. With hair that's nicely arranged, a crown on his head, and lots of jewels and ornaments adorning his body. So you might mistake him for a bosatsu. But look for the hand gesture, called a mudra, of the six elements. This is something you might see ninjas doing in manga or anime. The mudra of the six elements is when you take the index finger of your left hand and grasp it with your right hand. As for what he offers, well, how about illuminating everything in the world? Healing, prosperity, and last but certainly not least, calmness in the world. A neat bit of trivia, Dainichi Nyorai has been worshipped from as early as the late 700s in the Heian era. But before that, he was called Birushana. Birushana is from the Sanskrit word Vairokana. That version of Dainichi was made into a giant statue in 752 in Nara. And it's the largest bronze statue in the world, which is, you probably guessed it, the big Buddha of Nara, the Nara Dai Butsu. So if you've ever been there or seen pictures of it, and you happen to be Team Monkey or Team Sheep, he's watching out for you. And me too, because I'm a monkey. Number seven. Next, chicken people, come gather around. Were you born in the years 1945, 1957, 1969, 1981, 1993, 2005, or 2017? You lucky fowl are under the stern gaze of Fudo Myo. Personally, I am more than a tad drawn to this fellow recently. Where up until now we've had peaceful, serene-faced bosatsu and nyorai, now we've got the wrathful, brawny Fudomyo. Interestingly, Fudomyo is said to be a personification of Dainichi. But again, in another place, I read that it was Dainichi's messenger. I don't know. Fudomyo means the immovable one. And boy, is he tough. Angry, scowling, face aside, he's carrying a devil-subduing sword that can cut through ignorance in one hand and a rope to tie up demons in the other. Often you see him with a third eye, too. And look for the fangs. One will point up, the other will point down. He'll also be surrounded by flames. So what can he help you with? Well, besides moving obstacles, he gives blessings from disasters, victories in battle, driving away demons, protecting those who are training in the Buddhist tradition, and he'll bring you money. Don't let the angry face fool you. He just wants to cut away the evil and guide you who are suffering from worldly desires to the path of Buddhism, turning anger into salvation for a thousand years. And eight, and lastly, we have our dog and wild boar people. You have arrived. Dogs are those who are born in 1946, 1958, 1970, 1982, 1994, 2000, 2018, and wild boars, 1947, 1959, 1971, 1983, 1995, 2007, 2019. Remember that triad of Amida, Kanon and Seishi on either side of the Amida Buddha? Are Amida Nyorai? Well, you puppies and piggies get Amida himself, the big guy, the biggest guy actually, not Dainichi Nyorai, who I mentioned earlier, is on top of the esoteric traditions. But Amida is just top overall. For example, to pure land Buddhist, the Jodoshu, Amida has beaten out the real historical Buddha as most popular. 
Speaking of most popular, remember that the Pure Land Buddhists are the most popular in Japan today? Interestingly, Buddhism wasn't for the regular people for a very long time. Remember when I talked about court women in the Heian era worshipping Fugen? That was the court women. It wasn't until Jodo Shu, Pure Land Buddhism, that suddenly the faith became accessible. No more fancy, complicated rituals and all that hubbub. Two monks, Honen and Shinnan, taught that all you need to do was to chant the name of Amida Buddha with all of your heart, and you too could be reborn into the Buddhist paradise. That prayer is, by the way, Namu Amida Butsu. So just repeating Namu Amida Butsu, Namu Amida Butsu, which is kind of hard, will get you there. The big Buddha in Kamakura is this one, Amida. But also he's in a whole lot of other places and in a whole lot of different forms. But one way to spot him is the meditation mudra, the hands in his lap with his thumbs touching and his fingers too. It's kind of complicated to explain. Just look at the Kamakura Buddha. He's doing it. Aside from coming down and whisking you away to the Western paradise after death, what else can Amida do? Well, Amida is very gentle and all accepting. He can bring you long life and tranquility and save you from hardships too. And sometimes you might find him riding a peacock or a goose. So I guess he's got a sense of humor. Okay, I'm going to end here for today. Now everyone knows who their own patron Buddhist deity is. Speaking of patrons, thank you patrons. We reached 300 and I am so grateful. And I want to do something different and special for you all. Right now I'm doing some research on Japanese wolves, which are extinct, by the way. Very sad. But they used to be a thing. And I found an old wolf temple up in the mountains about two hours from my house. So I'm going to go there, visit, take some photos and videos, some binaural sounds maybe, because it is way in the mountains, Then I'm going to put something together and share it with the patrons. So thank you all so much. And if you have any other ideas of something special that you would like me to do, just let me know. Thanks everyone for listening. Take care, stay well, and give a little nod to your protecting Buddhist deity. I'll talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye. You've reached the end of the show, and I just want you to know how much we appreciate you listening and supporting us. Any subscribing, reviewing, and gushing to your friends, family, even random strangers, really does help keep us going. If you have the means and you want to help a little more and get a little more, we are making extra content over on Patreon, all for only $5 a month. Or, if you like to read horror, you might be interested in my Bram Stoker-nominated short story collection, The Carp-Faced Boy and Other Tales. Hontoni arigato gozaimasu. Thank you again, and I'll talk to you real soon.